and he puts like the hilt of the knife in her asshole and starts fucking her from behind. I was going to say, you must have started masturbating, right? I was so wet. I had never been that wet. Welcome to Sweet Release. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Cami. Ladies, welcome. Thanks so much. Welcome to Sweet Release. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Of course. So you both have your own podcast, Double Teamed, and you talk all things kink, non-monogamy, pleasure, sexuality, all of that, which I love. And you also twins, identical twins. Are you identical? So, okay, funny story. We don't know because one doctor told my mom that were identical and the other told her that we were fraternal and she was like I don't remember how many placentas there were so she doesn't know so we think we're identical because we're mirror image Mm -hmm. so she's left-handed I'm Mm right-handed we have our moles on the opposite side and if you look how we found out that we were mirror image was our dentist told us because our teeth like kind of ever so slightly go the opposite ways oh wow so each other yeah so and mirror image tends to be identical so we think we're identical you probably are. You know, the same thing happened to me because I'm a twin. And yeah. the same thing happened to me and my twin. They told us when we were born that we were fraternal because they it was separate sex, separate sperm or whatever, different placentas. And yeah. so then we did 23 and Me a few years ago. And it was like, oh, you have an identical twin. And our entire lives we were like, oh, no, we're not fraternal. Or we're, we're not identical. We're fraternal. We just look a lot alike. Oh, and wow. then and then we just found out a few years ago that we are identical and apparently the egg can split early enough and form two separate sacs so you can still have the same dna and be an identical twin wow. well, you should something. do 23 and yeah. me I was gonna say, or yeah, whatever there's so many options you can do yeah. ancestry whatever I that's cool about it um, so are you and your twin close like do y'all talk about like sex and all of that because like I don't know. People, I think, are in the same community. Yeah, <laughs> people are like often surprised that like we are as open with each other as we are about like sex and you know kink and all that. We definitely are really open. Um, we love talking about sex. I think most of my core f- group of girls, we all are pretty open about that sort of thing. Nice. But I can't imagine ever being at like a party with my my twin. And so I'm curious <laughs> to know the dynamic because you guys are in the lifestyle right yeah. and so you often go to sex parties and mm-hmm. and what is that dynamic like and what is double teamed too like have you ever double teamed someone or is that just a name for the podcast just a name okay so the- right. <laughs> let's start with the name yeah my the reason the pod is named double teamed is because we were at a bar with a guy that i was dating at the time and his friend and his friend is a producer of logan paul's podcast and he, N- Nikki and I were talking about, um, you know, like Nikki's lifestyle because she and her husband at the time had like just started like being more intentional with their open relationship. And then it's so the guy was like, oh, y'all should definitely start a podcast about this. Um, and so he put us in like a week later, he put us in an email thread with an audio editor and he goes, and we were thinking like some weird title, Tinder like Tinder Tales. I don't remember what the fuck it was. So but bad. <laughs> he he literally he, in in an email he goes, "Hey Brad, this is Cami and Nikki from Double Team Podcast. They're just getting started, and they need your help with audio editing." And that's how it started. And yeah. We're like, and we sat there for a minute, and we're like, "Double Team? Do we like that?" Uh, and then our friend was like, "No, you need to do this." keep it at double teamed and we're like so okay. we do yeah it's and i mean no we so like we don't play together yeah we have three rules at sex parties yeah we don't play together we don't watch each other and we don't fuck the same people yeah that's what i would do too yeah. that's a rule that we always made growing up was like we're never gonna oh, have sex that. with the same guy yeah. um i couldn't imagine like it never came up like to have the opportunity to watch her yeah exactly. <laughs> so that wasn't something you know growing up mm-hmm. but that was just the idea of it mm-hmm. was weird and even i had this best best friend who was kind of like the triplet we kind of called her the triplet and so she felt like more of a sister mm-hmm. and as i was exploring parties and going to um yeah a lot more sex parties when I moved to LA I invited her and I brought her along and we 
kind of ended up playing in like the same room and like oh wow she ended up going down on me a little bit and I had to like stop it because I was like oh my god this feels too weird like yeah. I can't I've I kind of see you as my sister and I just don't know if I can cross those paths yeah um so that's cool to know that we're on yeah. the same page with that because I yeah. can't imagine it a lot of people have the twin fantasy so it's oh, a thousand percent and yeah. people all the time they're like you know, when they see us at parties, they get, like, all excited, and we're like, no, sorry, that's just not us. So, but, I mean, like, we go to pretty big parties. Like, usually it's at least, like, 100 people. So it's easy to avoid each other in their big houses. Yeah. So I'll just, like, usually what will happen is I'll ask someone if they see Kimi in the room, or I'll just, like, take a quick peek in if I, like, and then, you know, if I, I don't think I've ever had an instance where, like, I saw you, like, Usually we just kind of call each other's names. That's like Marco Polo. I'm like, oh, yeah. you know what? No, I remember the last Halloween sex party that we went to. Mm -hmm. There was that open room. Mm -hmm. And I was on top of Cody. And you literally, you walk in, you go, oh, and then immediately turn around. Do you remember that? Oh, I remember that. Like, well, because the, that, it, the door, it just. Oh, had, yeah. It had a partition. Yep, yep. And there, I walked on the other side of the partition. Yep. I remember yeah. that, yeah. Because there wasn't a door. It was just like. An entrance. So I like, think I saw the top of your head and I was like, I know what that is. And I like, <laughs> <laughs> I know that face. I know that head. I just remember, like, and I guess that's like one of my favorite things about going to parties together is like kind of playing like that game of like, what room can I enter? Um, and our friends will like, you know, they'll help us. Yeah, they'll help us out. They founder, all know. Yeah. yeah. Know your boundaries. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. I'll go, I'll go like to the entrance of a room and you know let's say one of my friends is right there I'll be like hey can you make sure Nikki is not in there and she'll like look around or people will warn us too like I remember one time I was I was about to walk into a room and someone goes Cammy's in there and I was like thank you <laughs> and I just immediately left we were at so. one sex party and I was just going down the hallway because there was like a hallway and then all the rooms that you could go into and I was just walking down the hallway going Nicole! <laughs> and then, like, I didn't hear anything, so I was like, go in a room. And Wait, was that the down. one uh, where you got DP? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I remember that one now. Ooh, DP. Yeah. Is that one of your favorite things? I've only done it once. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I tried it over the summer. It was the first time. It had long been on my list. Um, it was really funny. The two guys that I did it with are like best friends. They like met each other on Craigslist. No when way. One of them was trying to find a threesome like 12 years ago. <laughs> They've had like over 50 threesomes together. And uh, we were at this party and I was like not in the mood to play. I was just kind of like there chilling, hanging out. And one of them goes, hey, you've been wanting to do DP for a while. Do you want to like go give it a try? And I was like, no, no, I think I'm okay. And then he was like, no, no, come on, like let's. You know, he was like, you've you've been wanting to do this. Let's just let's just go get it done. And I was like, okay. So we did, and I loved it. Have you ever tried it? No, I've tried DVP. So like okay. two in the vagina, which that's I, a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. I yeah. didn't love it. For anal sex for me is more personal. So Same. it's something that I really only do with men that I'm dating. Yeah. Um, and I've never done it with a woman, actually. I've been... Oh, really? Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Well, I've only been... I guess I've only been, like, pegged or fucked by... I could count it on, I think, one hand, maybe five mm -hmm. women or so. Nice. Okay. Um, so, yeah, but the vagina is always my go-to. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, like usually prefer vaginal i love anal but dp was definitely a lot more arousing than i thought it would be mm -hmm. like i thought it was gonna be like overwhelming and it would be like a nice feeling and i'd be like okay this is like fun and like you know something new but like when we were in it i was like oh i could like orgasm from this there was just so much going on that i, I didn't you couldn't yeah but at the same time i was just like i i thought to myself i'm like if we kept going and like i was really like focused and like more present because it was at a party, so there were, like, you know, people walking around and, like, people peeking in, like, oh, DP, nice! And I'm, like, <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm trying to focus. I'm so, trying to get there. Exactly, yeah. So oh. it was, um, I, I felt like I could probably orgasm if I if I had focused on it just a bit more. Mm. I want to so. try it now. You I should. Have, yeah. I haven't tried it yet. The oh, only, maybe at the next party. The only thing was the guy that was in my vag um, was massive. He's mm. like six inches around and probably like nine inches. Just oh a really big dick. <laughs> Why that one? Well, they were best friends. Right? They were best friends. <laughs> like, yeah. And I, th it was one of my play partners a, yeah. that I've known for like two years, but still I was just like, that was a lot. So I don't know that I would recommend that, but Size, it yeah. still felt good. Yeah, yeah. The average is better when you have two at one time. Like, I can especially imagine. Your ass. <laughs> yeah. Boyfriend yes. dick is better for, you know, anyone. <laughs> 
I like the term boyfriend dick. It's good. It's also not a bad term. I feel like men get so, like, discouraged when they hear that, like, if a girl calls their, like, penis, like, boyfriend dick. And I'm like, that is long-term dick, Mm -hmm. my friend. (laughs) It's true because too big is not good for long-term because you can't have sex every day. And you're sore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you want to have pleasure all the time or whenever you can, so... And you I can relate. Like emotionally prepare for it. You should. <laughs> for sure. I had a play partner that was really big. And half the time I would just be like, can you just eat me out? Because I can't take your dick. <laughs> Short five minute intervals. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you well, been to a lot of play parties? or? Yeah, in the past. Okay. So I'm definitely, um, my partner and I definitely want to start going to more. We're like definitely getting back into that. Um nice. But yes, I did go to a lot. When I first moved to LA, I kind of just fell into the swinger lifestyle and and BDSM. And so I was going to dungeons and and parties and and it was my lifestyle. It truly was for like two or three years. All like that was just instead of going to house parties or bars, like that's every weekend. That's just kind of what I did. And and I was single, so it was like that was awesome. And mm-hmm. I was dating couples and just kind of really exploring my sexuality. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a topic I would love to talk to you ladies about too, because okay. Nikki, you are bisexual, right? Mm-hmm. And you hetero flexible. Yes. So where did you find your sexuality or how did that come out for you? I think I've always been bi. Um, I remember I talked about this in one, I can't remember if it was on our show or with someone else, but like I remember when I was little and my mom would get like the Victoria's Secret magazines and I was always like, I would look at these pictures and I'd be like, these women are like so hot, like mm-hmm. it's arousing. And I was always so confused by it, but I loved men too. Like I had always like romantic feelings towards men. <laughs> So I never really thought I was like bisexual. I was like, okay, women are just beautiful. And you know, we're we're all just sexually attracted to them because you know, the, the female body, the curves, the softness, all of it. (laughs) Exactly. So I thought I was like, okay, maybe it's just like an attraction, but like, that's it. And then I think whenever, um, we started, like when we opened up initially, I really only played with men, but then once we started like actually doing stuff together, my ex-husband and I, so like initially we would just like, it was like whenever we were apart from each other, we would just like have one night stands here and there and like that was so it. So that's how e kind of started for you. Yeah. You were doing yeah. it separate. And then we started doing more stuff together, like threesomes and sex parties um, and things like that. And that's when I started playing with women and... Then I started, like, so obviously, like, I would play with women at, like, uh, in group scenarios, but then I definitely wanted, like, more, like, alone time with women, so then, like, I would start dating women, and, like, I went on the apps and, like, you know, um, put both men and women on there as well, so, um, and I've dated, like, I would say dated, I guess, two women? Three. (laughs) Oh, yeah, 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 okay, three women. I was like, wait. (laughs) <laughs> um, even though her so and twins I, are four. Yeah. <laughs> even though her and I are like best friends now. Um, but, and so that was also interesting to see like more of kind of like the romantic side. The thing is, is like, I don't have any patterns when it comes to dating women. Cause like, obviously I've like, I've had romantic patterns with men, like dating men in like romantic settings and all of that. So like dating women is just like completely different. Mm-hmm. Like half the time I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Is this flirting? um what do you like you know you're just like it's just completely new and I don't know like it's yeah it's been fun and I think you know especially when I think about like the future like in whatever relationship dynamic that I'm in like I would love a partner that because I think I'm getting to the point where like I want a little bit more of a of a primary more of a long-term partnership again but like I want someone that like wants to you know have threesomes with me is maybe okay with me like having sex with women every now and then like I don't know that I could ever like fully give up women that's how I felt and when my partner and I got together around four years ago that was something that we had talked about and we kind of started in a little bit of an open scenario anyway so it was kind of like he knew that I loved pussy as much as dick and so Mm -hmm. it was like talked about and I was like I'm 
definitely similarly to you, like I, I was ready for that, like long-term yeah. commitment. I was excited about him, but then like the, ex I was also excited about like the, you know, also ha having fun with women too. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a voyeur. So I love watching like, that's why parties are so fun. Yeah. And I'm an exhibitionist too. So I love being watched, but love that. watching my partner with someone else like does really turn me on. Yeah. So that was kind of what we started exploring initially was just women because that was what I was so happy with his dick that I was like, all I want is pussy. So all that's just what yeah, we've been yeah. doing for a long time. And, and now we're starting, we're like, okay, you know what? Now I think parties would be fun. And so we're just dipping back into it. So is it's he exciting. Fe like hetero flexible or anything like that? No, he identifies as straight. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. My ex-husband was bisexual as well oh that's hot and um i loved watching him with men and women but like it was so fun watching him with men. <laughs> i would have three sons of men and i'd be like i'll just watch y'all can do whatever oh, you want those are some of my favorites yeah and, and that's one of my dreams is like a full bisexual mm -hmm. scenario yeah. or threesome or yeah. um play party scenario oh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> paris it's beautiful <laughs> I don't know. Sexuality is fun, though. Like, I think... And sex parties is always a really great place to explore, I think, at least. And mm -hmm. I think that's where Kimi kind of, like, yeah, lets her hetero flexibility shine. I... And, and for me, it's kind of... I've been... I... Growing up, I... And not that I ever, like, found the Victoria's Secret models like that. I, like, I thought they were like, yeah, they look great. Cute babies. So you don't want to buy it. Um, but, like, I only watched lesbian porn growing up. I mm. still do. That's really the only porn category I watch is just lesbian. Um, and then I always questioned it. I was like, am I bisexual? Am I into women? Um, and then when I started attending play parties is when I like allowed myself the chance to like, you know, see if I liked it. And it's been really nice and eye opening in the sense that like, I give myself that container to explore. And I've been able to figure out like, okay, I'm not bisexual but I am hetero flexible and I like playing with women to like a certain extent. And I'm glad I've given myself that ability to explore that. So like, even though I like lesbian porn and I, I like playing with women at sex parties, like to usually like waist up, I've barely, barely played with pussy and I don't know like how to go about it. So I'm just like- Are you terrified. scared of it? Okay. I am terrified. <laughs> really? Yes. Don't be scared of it. I am. It's so better than dick in my, for, the, in my opinion, for oral. The closest nice. I got was at a sex party a few months ago. Um, this girl and I were playing with her partner. And she had she had a vibrator on my clit while we were playing with him. And I was like, and that's the closest I've let a girl touch my pussy. And I was like, okay, like, it's not bad. Like, I like it. I don't know why it scares me so much. But I like that I've given myself like the ability to explore that and I have like found that conclusion. So that's, yeah. Thanks for sharing, yeah. yeah <laughs> Did welcome. you, so when you started exploring in your marriage, mm -hmm. um, your ex-husband, is that when you were introduced to kind of the non-monogamy side as well? Or did you guys yeah. kind of dive well, into it at the same time? So I started reading books about it. Mm. Like, what was it? Maybe around the time I was like 23. Yeah, I started reading Reverse Harem, which is a like a category or, or genre of books where it's like a girl and her like five boyfriends, all like saving the world while having like really hot sex like in between, <laughs> um, and they're all like madly in love with her, and sometimes like the men will play together too, and that I love reading. Animals. Erotica, yeah, yes. it's my fave too. I have, yeah. I, I have to read books that have sex in them. It's I have. Like, so we could do a whole episode please? just on books. I think we yeah. should. The yeah. book that I'm reading right now, I actually have it in the car because I brought it with me. I can't put it down, and it's so kinky, and I fucking love it. Nice. Um, but yeah, so that's how I discovered like, you know, more out of box relationships, and I introduced Nikki to those books right around the time that her and her husband were opening up. Yep. So it was like a really interesting. Mm you know, the way we both found this, like, lifestyle in different ways, but, like, around the same time. So. I feel like I read the books and I was like, I can make this my reality. Yeah, this and is then nice. I was like, I was <laughs> done. <laughs> but it was actually, well, it's funny, because at least for us, my ex-husband and I, our very first introduction to non-monogamy was we had a friend 
Um, him and his partner were long distance when they were in college. And we were all at a rave once in that was like my freshman year. And we like turn and we see him making out with some random chick and we're like, that's not your girlfriend. Are you cheating on her? And he was like, no, no, she's cool with it. This is the arrangement we have. And we were like, okay, cool, dope. And we like tabled that for like four years before finally, you know, whenever we did start like our whole non-monogamous journey, then we were like, remember that? And then I was reading the books and I was like, and then, you know, there's this. I was like, okay, well maybe we could, because we were both at the time pilots. So we were both like, off flying around everywhere so I was like okay we spend a lot of time apart we're hot we want to bang each other but <laughs> you know maybe other people and he actually like came up with the or well I should say he presented it and then we started so yeah that's kind of how it went but I didn't know about her situation until like what a year after yeah I told oh, her so you kept and it I, close I had a friend who had like seen her ex-husband like or well like, husband at the time had seen her husband with this other chick at a bar and she was like and you know she and I were like, like a golfing course or whatever I, don't know, I wasn't golfing um but we were playing something some game anyways and uh we're talking about relationships and I'm like gushing about how much I loved Nikki and her <laughs> husband's relationship and she's over here like uh, I, I think like, I you know, saw like, something. Oh, what the fuck? Uh. So she tells me about that. And I'm like stewing in this for months. I'm like, fuck, did he cheat on her? I was so angry. I didn't know how to like react. I didn't know how to talk to her about it. And then I think like four or five months later, we're at a rave. And she decides to tell me then <laughs> that they're in an open relationship. And I'm like relieved. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so it wasn't cheating. Thank God. But like... It was that whole scenario right there. I was just like shocked, but also relieved. And I didn't know how to process it. And I think it took me like maybe a month or so to like really sink into it. Like I would say longer than that, but yeah. Yeah. It took you some time to like. I, it. Well, I had a lot of questions too. Cause then, you know, it's one thing to read about it in books, but then like to know someone that is like practicing it when you are still trying to like get to know something and you know, of course, like, my first thought was, like, oh, my God, like, are you happy? Are you okay? Are you getting, you know, are you hurt? Is he hurting you? You know, so that was, like, my main concern. And then, you know, I was also young. I was, like, 24. Like, yeah. I Did you I, have a lot of, like, shame around it? Is that why you weren't didn't want to tell her initially? Or were you just kind of, it was private for the two of you? I was just trying to figure it out. And yeah. I was also, like, I, I didn't really know, like, what to, like, I had no terms. I didn't know anything about it. I was just yeah. like, this is like an, an agreement we have. And I, I think we were still trying to figure it out. Too. Exploration kind yeah, of still, so, for sure. And then, yeah. yeah, but then once I got like more comfortable in it, then I was like able to be like more open about it, which, yeah, I don't know if that was your experience, but like for me, it definitely took me some time to get like comfortable in like the terms and like the, you know, the, well, everything just in relation to the lifestyle. So Yeah, for me, there were a lot of different styles of open relationships that I had. And yeah. so I think I figured out um, like what worked for me and what didn't and what kind of boundaries I needed. Yeah. And, and to ultimately not start, like the biggest thing I tell people if, if they're curious about it is just to not start like with like a free for all initially. Yeah. Cause that's mm -hmm. kind of like when I met um, a couple exes, I met them like, on FetLife or at parties and so initially initially it was like oh we're like fully open or they were long distance so it's like we just get to do whatever we want and mm. that for me was like emotionally draining because yeah. I I I was getting sensitive and I and we weren't like in love we were falling for each other so it was like you didn't have this foundation first so mm -hmm. I always recommend like building that foundation first and then exploring and, and figuring out what feels good and like listening to your body, of course, always. Yeah. I think that's what I've realized in my non-monogamy journey. It's like, I have to build a foundation before mm -hmm. I can be open. Otherwise, like my attachment style will freak the fuck out. <laughs> so. so do you consider yourself e &M as well? Yeah. I mean, I, what I'm hoping for in like my primary partnership is a partner that's like open to group experiences, threesomes, sex parties, um, orgies, whatever. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know that I can do polyamory. Maybe not like, you know, for a decade, but after. Um, but I, 
<laughs> but I, ten years I, and we can try poly. Okay. Exactly. I just I don't know if I can if I can do that. I've given Polly a chance, and Polly is a single person. It's really fun, and it's it was what I needed at the time. And I say this like it didn't just happen months ago. <laughs> um, but now, like I think through exploring that, I realized okay, when I'm in a primary partnership, I have to build a strong foundation before it can become like truly open in a sense of like not just group play but like other like solo experiences I would need to Mm -hmm. build like a really good foundation before I can get there but Mm -hmm. I I can't give up sex parties and I can't give up group play so like I I need someone that like is down for that like from the beginning yeah yeah do you feel like you have like a group play kink both of you like do you like I, I some people call it a kink is that some one of yours I love being watched I love watching. So you're also an exhibitionist yes. in a way. Yes, and yeah. it's fun sharing. Like, I, you know, what was it? <clears throat> when I was with my par- poly partner, one time he and I were at a sex party, and um, my friend and I were, like, giving him a blowjob together. And I thought it was so fun. I was like, oh, my God. I, like, And it, it's just the being exhibition part of it is, I think, for me, one of the most, like, fun parts. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And the fluidity, say, yeah. yeah, the fluidity yeah. of all of that is hot. I agree, oh, yeah. and like I don't know, for me at least, like parties just feel so like free and like uninhibited mm-hmm. and so like primal in a way, just because you know like everyone's kind of getting into the mm-hmm. the the feel of it. That I don't know, I and just it's love the beautiful. environment. Yeah, like it's beautiful to watch people fuck. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have such a fun time just like going to a sex party to see how other people fuck. Half the time we go, like especially like Kinky Rabbit or Sing Time, we'll go just to watch people. Yeah, yeah, or like, just to be in, in that energy. environment. Yeah, right. Because sometimes you're not in the mood for penetration, or yeah, at least exactly. I find yeah. your sexual energy can shift so yeah. drastically depending on the day. So I've definitely been to a few. Sorry, my dog is whining over there. Mm-hmm. I've definitely been to a few where. I just didn't want to play. Yeah, the, yeah. Ener- the, the energy just wasn't there. Or maybe I was craving only women that night or, yeah. you know, so definitely can definitely relate. I think the great thing about sex parties and, like, the misconception is, like, especially when you tell someone that like, that's never been to a sex party before <laughs> is, um, you know, every everyone assumes it's like, oh, are you, like, banging everybody? Like, is it, what what's going on? And it's like, there are so many different things that can happen at a sex party. That don't include penetration. Para likes talking about sex parties yeah. too. She's like, I'm like, enjoy. Wait, I have an opinion. Um, like one of my fondest memories at a sex party is um, there was I had a friend and another friend were like on the bed, and it was this massive bed, and there were a ton of people on it, and two of them were like kind of off to the side and you know having sex, and I just like leaned down to like talk to them and watch, and he turns over and he goes, "Can I?" Like your nipple, I was like, absolutely. So I'm just like there, like chit chatting with the girl while he's like on my boob, and I'm like, this is great. So I, that's sex parties with like those little instances where it's like the funny moments, or like mm-hmm. one time one of Nikki's play partners was in the bathroom peeing, and I just like go in and wait, waiting for him to finish peeing. We're having a full on conversation, and then I sit down and pee, and then he gets up, washes his hands. We're still, great. Right. Oh, we're still having a conversation, and it's just like, I don't know. It's yeah. fun. That's funny. Yeah, there's a lot of fun interactions at parties. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's good like memories. Yeah, that's what makes it so good. Yeah. I'm curious for you, did kink and non-monogamy like happen at the same time? Or were you like kinky and then open or open and then kinky? I think they kind of happened at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Um, and for me, I like went home with a woman for the first time when I was living abroad. But I had kind cool. of experienced kinky sex as well like a little bit abroad like I got slapped in the face the first time and like choked aggressively and I was like whoa like that is not something I ever thought that I would be into (laughs) are you into it yeah oh yeah slapping is one of my favorite things I'm a I'm a very sensual person and so anything that like sensations Mm -hmm. like yeah, so a slap, like it's not really the power play dynamic for me. It's more of like that sensation on my cheek and then channeling that and like mm-hmm. yeah. through me, my like body. Anticipi- like the anticipation. Mm. <laughs> Have you ever, you know, oh man, I, I love getting slapped across the face and I love whenever I'm with like maybe a new partner and I'm asking them like, hey, can you slap me across the face? And it's like that hesitation and then just like that little like moment before like the sting, I'm just like, 
I usually ask for it. So it's never <laughs> been like discussed ahead of time, but that anticipation does sound fun. I'll have to like talk about it first and then maybe. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. That's, that's fun. usually what I do. I'll, t- I'll tell them, give them free reign and then whatever happens in the middle of it. Yeah. Let's talk about kinks. What are your, some of your kinks? I you love... Start? Well, man, there's so many. Well, okay, I feel vanilla after talking to a professional dominatrix a few weeks back. Um, I love, like, degradation, praise, love getting hit, so flogged, paddled, caned, um, slapped, what else? Impact in general, yeah. Yeah, impact yeah, impact play. I'm huge on impact because I love the pain. Um, and I, I really, I like... Especially when I'm really into sex and I'm, like, deep into the, like, you know, that primal part of it where you're, like, like subspace, in it. Yeah. Yep. No, not not even subspace. Just, like, when you're having, like, really intense, like, sex and it's, you're both, like, really connected. I love my pain with pleasure. Mm-hmm. So, impact does, you know, does me wonders. Um, but those are, like, my main ones. I don't know. I, I love playing with feet, like... Mm. playing and receiving that's also really fun do you Um, like inflicting pain as well like have you ever been on the other side of it yeah I like topping so I like inflicting pain when it's not sexual though Mm. so I don't mind like if it's if I'm you know getting fucked like I'm not gonna choke him I'm not gonna slap him I don't want to do that but if it's you know I'm at a party and I have a flogger in my hand and someone's bent over like I will gladly go to town so nice yeah what about you Nikki I've got a ton. Um, okay, so also impact, I'm big on it. And I'm switchy, so I like um, being both dominant and submissive. Uh, but oh, big and on I'm submissive, I guess. Yeah, she's mainly yeah. sub. I don't think you've ever... Yeah, you've talked people, but you won't like dom people. Correct. Um, I love impact. Um, I love sensation play. Um, and I know you read this in our bio. I'm yeah. big on knife play. I know. I'm excited to talk about this because I don't really know that. I mean, <sighs> it's a part of sensation. It's play. a part. It's a form of sensation. Play. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Describe um, it to me. We have these claws that would be like a great starter if yeah. you're ever interested. They're oh. made by a knife maker. I should have brought them. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, they're made by a knife maker and they're like, just, they attach right here and they're just big silver points. Um, and they're very sharp. So, but, okay, this is how I like to explain knife play. First of all, I discovered it from a book. So, oh, okay. I was reading this book. Den of Vipers. Den of Vipers. Terrible, terrible plot. <laughs> the smut is phenomenal. Nice. And the characters I loved. So, because I'm a big reader, and so, and I like a good plot. And when I first started reading this book, I was like, I can't stand the conflict resolution in this book. However, the smut is worth it. So, I stuck it through. And now, it will forever stick with me because it introduced me to my knife kink. Um, but basically there was a scene where like the, one of the bad, well, he's not a bad guy, but morally they're all like corrupt. <laughs> yeah. Morally corrupt. They're all like mafia guys mm-hmm. and they capture this girl and you know, she had, she falls in love with all four of them. And at one point she's downstairs watching one of them named Diesel, like skin some guy that like, you know, was in the wrong with them. And he's, like, all covered in blood, and he's shirtless, and his abs, you know, whatever. Anyways, so she gets turned on, so they start having sex. And he puts, like, the hilt of the knife in her asshole and starts fucking her from behind. Oh, nice. And the knife cuts him, but, like, it... uh, And then he used the, like, he, like, took it out and then, like, was, like, grazing her. And I read this, and I was, like... I just remember I paused one... (laughs) I paused at one moment... And I, like, put my hand between my I was going to say, you must have started masturbating, right? I was so wet. I had never been that wet from reading something before. And half the time I was like, oh, my God, what is this? Anyway, so I was like, so whenever I started dating my two doms, I told them about this. I'm like, I've never tried it, but I got so wet that I would love to, like, see what it's like to play with a knife. And so they were like, well, do you want to give it a try sometime? I was like, absolutely. So one time when I went over to their house... They, like, we talked about it, and they, like, tied me up, and they took the knife and just started, like, grazing it all over my body, and at one point, he, like, took the very tip and was, like, flicking my clit with it, 
<laughs> You're like, no Every way. Every single time I hear her talk about that, I'm just like, oh, I, even <laughs> just like talking about it right now, I'm like getting, getting hot and bothered. Yeah. I hate it's yeah, it's the same. Well, okay. Here's one thing that I like about it. I'm normally very fidgety and I'm like yeah. moving all over the place. Her I'm legs always like moving. bouncing. Yeah. When Bothered. someone is dragging a knife across your body, particularly like around your jugulars, um, the level of stillness that you have to have it's like suddenly, you know, it's like survival kicks in and like you have to just stay utterly still and it's relaxing because hmm. then my mind is only focused on that. So I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm thinking I don't want someone to slice my throat. So it's, yeah, it's super zen. I love it. <laughs> it turns zen. me on. I love getting fucked afterwards, but yeah, it's like the sensation of it. Right. So the claws yeah. I'm imagining too. The claws are like the same. that's yeah. just, I love daggers. Oh, um, and now, <laughs> I just remember one time, not long ago, I was staying at my friend's house. I was like, wait, what's a dagger for a moment? I was like, I had to think. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's just like a fancy, yeah. yeah. Anyways, but I was staying at my friend's house, and I asked her to, uh, borrow some moisturizer, and for some reason, she, like, put it on the tip of a knife, because, like, that's what she found, and then she was like, <laughs> she was like, is this gonna turn you on? <laughs> <laughs> just moisturizer, No. <laughs> But I mean, you know, anyway, so That's funny. all my friends make fun of me for it in, would, in a very endearing way, but they know all about it. And you also have a corruption kink and you would love the book I'm reading right now. Yeah. Oh, I do. I have a huge corruption kink. Anytime I can corrupt someone with like a new something or an exposure kink, like I love introducing people to their secondary erogenous zones that they've never tried before. Mm. Um, I love fee. I love, yeah, there's a lot of things. I love piss play. Love, love, love piss play. Um, that's fun. I haven't ever done that. It's something that I've always thought like would be fun to do again with someone I'm dating. Like I would never be shower. (laughs) Right. I've done that before, but it was never like, it was just more playful. Like, can I pee on you? It's never like sexual. So, so for me, at least in one way that I really like it. And I don't know if people would count this as piss play, but for me, I kind of count it as piss play. Um, I like when a girl's like squirting, Mm. I want to be like covered in it. And mm. the, like I remember my ex female Dom would like gush like a fire hydrant when she squirted it and it was just like it would get all over me and I'd be like, Yes. So <laughs> yeah, so I like a lot of things. Well squirting isn't actually pee, but yeah. I guess it's like But it's got, it's similar it's to the sensation similar, yeah, it where has you're the getting same like yeah. Consistency too, I feel so, like. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first time um, I was hooking up with a couple that I dated for a little while and she was like sitting on my face and, and she like squirted all over me and I had like it was just like just everywhere like yeah, I was yeah. like and I didn't realize because it was like the first time and I was like oh my god that was like yeah. so much liquid and um, yeah obviously I, that was kind of in the beginning of my sexual awakening so I was like oh my god that was amazing like Love that. <laughs> and, yeah the sensations are very similar mm-hmm. like I don't know at least to me they are and so but I like kind of like the when there's like a very strong current I don't know what you want yeah. to call it. Waterfall happening. Yeah. Current. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like a good gush. Like, you know, if someone's like trickling on you, that's not fun. Oh, I know. I, I like usually that. like, if I have a partner I, and I tell them to like pee on me in the shower, like I don't want it to just, you know, be like a slow, like I want them to like aim. <laughs> just, like draw little figures. I don't care. You know, like, triangle, whatever. Yeah. No, I want it to feel. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. So, so does that conclude all your kinks? That's a lot. Yeah. You, you, I love it. At least the ones that come to mind. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that you're mostly kinky when you have sex, or does it kind of ebb and flow? It ebbs and flows, but mm-hmm. I will say I <clears throat> like I like to start vanilla with people mm. and then like build up to the kinks because like a lot of it takes a lot of trust for me. Yeah. For sure. So, but I also like I do find that like the more like romantic interest that I have in the person, the more I'm like willing to um, like open up. Another one, I don't know about you, but, like, primal play, like, biting and bruises Mm -hmm. and, like, lots of, like, scratching. That's one of my favorites. I've never done, like, a, like, hunt, but I would love to do a hunt. What do you mean by a hunt? You know, when they do, like, for example... Mm -hmm. The submissives are usually, like, you know, dressed up as, like, little furry animals. Right. The dogs are, like, the dogs and, like, the hunter, and then, like, you know, they go chase them. Mm-hmm. you know capture them and then you get something nice done yeah. <laughs> so have you have you ever been to um the hump film fest the hump. 
I've heard Hunt of it. Film Fest. Yeah. I remember seeing one. Um, it's just amateur porn. So it's nice. Dan Savage um, created it years and years ago. And I went several years ago. I've been a couple times, but it's fun. It's just people that submit their amateur porn, but it's like far above amateur most of the time. <laughs> like it's well, yeah. well produced. Um, but one I remember seeing was somebody like milking she was dressed up as a cow and she was like milking her udders but like making her like squirt and so she was like filling up this like bucket of milk and then she like drink it it was amazing I was like that's fun so the animal play is not something I've ever done but it's definitely I feel like I tap into just that like submissive energy when I have a Mm -hmm. collar on and I kind of sometimes get like like I like to crawl around like a cat you know so Mm -hmm. sometimes (laughs) I can relate that's cute. Mm-hmm. And the cat ears that you had earlier, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Are you and your partner super, like, kinky together? Yeah. Nice. You know, I think, I, like anything, it goes up and down and mm-hmm. depends on the mood and the yeah. energy. But I do think, um, yeah, we are. Um, definitely. I think the, the main stuff we do, we do a lot of rope and bondage Ooh, and I, we oh, have, shibari, yeah. Yeah. yeah, me too. I'm like, wait, the more we talk about it, I'm like, I forgot <laughs> I that one. Do you guys do suspensions? I love suspensions. No, that's something I, I'm definitely more of a newbie, okay. but, but I'm teaching actually a shibari workshop on Friday. So I'm like teaching a few introductory knots um, nice, at like nice. a couple's retreat. So I, I know usually I'm on the rope bunny side of it. So mm-hmm. this is cool Same. to be like teaching it. Um, but I, uh, we have like this bar above our bed that we can like, I like to be tied up and we have chains and rope. And so, um, being, um, yeah, like restricted feels mm-hmm. really good to me and really just like some breath play, I guess. But mostly I do that on my own. Like when I'm giving head, I like hold my breath and then like, Oh, I don't know. It's just kind of like holding that energy and like going to town on the dick and then like, finally breathing and then like channeling that energy through him and like taking it back it just like feels really good I don't know just holding my breath being choked um Love choking. is something that I'm into and you just gave me a phenomenal idea. Tell me. <laughs> well, because I love breath play and I used to have a partner that used to like choke the shit out of me to the point where like you know it was yeah it would definitely um near the edge plenty of times but I never thought of looking at blowjobs as a form of like doing breath. I didn't think about it until recently. And I was like, wow, I'm literally like, cause I'm like holding, like I'm not breathing for a long time. And then it's like a head rush and then it's like a body rush. And then I'm going to try to channel that. Yeah. And then when you let it go or when you finally do breathe, it's like, and then you still have the dick in your mouth or whatever you do, or, you know, it's just a fun way to like circulate that energy Yeah, and make it more powerful. I had a partner that would like put his dick all the way into where like I couldn't breathe and then he'd count like yeah oh, I like that <laughs> that was Mike actually yeah I'm not uh, surprised he, I figured as soon as he said that I was like it's probably Mike yeah <laughs> no he would he would count and like by the and he we would try to get to 10 and usually by the end of it I'd be like you know get me out of this but like the rush of it would be so fun um and then I have another partner who like sometimes he'll like cover my mouth and my nose fucking love that yeah or being like held down too mm-hmm. from behind like where yeah. you can't breathe as well yeah we're a feels pillow good, to the or... face love a pillow to yeah the face. like smother me i don't want to breathe <laughs> for one moment. So. but yeah i would say i'm we're not as kinky in our everyday sex like it's yeah, just kind of depends yeah. um I mean, with kink usually i i'm that way where it's like i have to be able to trust the person mm-hmm. um but i think it definitely like takes a different mindset and it's not always the you know you can't do that every day or maybe you can but like I feel like for most people it's like every now and then so. yeah yeah it comes in waves yeah, for sure I find I haven't been in my subspace in quite some time and I haven't while, either yeah and for a while I was like you know actually I don't feel called to be in my subspace anytime soon and then now I felt it reawaken where I'm like I through this book that I'm reading I'm like, <laughs> I want to be in my subspace again so I hope to find that I love it. I love it. Well, as we're kind of finishing up here, I do like to finish off like talking or just asking you that last time you had that sweet, sweet release since this is the sweet release podcast. So it doesn't have to be the most recent orgasm, but maybe just like a good recent story of a good, a good one. 
I have one. So, or unless you want to go no, first. No, you go first. Okay, so <laughs> on um, Monday, so just, what, two days ago? Yeah. Yeah. Um, on Monday, <clears throat> my play partner was like, hey, do you want to have a threesome with me and my partner? And I, was in, I texted him back. I literally said, I was like, what time? Because I want to be in bed by nine. And he was like, just come over now. I was like, perfect. He lives like 10, 15 minutes from me. So I went over and the two of them dommed me. And so at least for me, sweet release means orgasm. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to make sure I got the right. <laughs> that's, my, that's my version of an orgasm. Good. Sweet, sweet release. Love it. So, I love that, by the way. Thank yeah. you. So they tied me up. And so are they like dressed in full dom vibes or are they just like giving you that energy? She had lingerie on, but he was just naked. So it was nice. just more like, yeah, just the energy. But they like had me tied to the bed, all kinds of things. And um, he's pretty long. So um, I don't know if you've ever had like a cervical orgasm. And usually like with a longer partner, you can. Yeah. yeah. I've definitely had like the... I. I I'm having a, because I'm also doing an orgasm workshop on Friday, teaching about all the different types of orgasms. Yeah. And the anterior, like, A spot is kind of like that back wall. Yeah. And the cervical is, like, right there, too. So a lot of people say that, like, cervical is different than that anterior, like, the the kind of, like, internal, like, guttural one. But for me, I feel like... I don't know if I've never had a cervical and I'm just getting like that erogenous zone in the back, but I feel like I definitely get that deep orgasm a lot. It's my favorite thing to have that with the clitoral at like the same time. Agreed. That is definitely my favorite. Um, This one, I didn't both at the same time. Wow. I need to do this. Yeah. I haven't, I didn't have anything on my clit, so it was just like a, like deep. Yeah. Deep cervical. And, um, I was like literally convulsing and it was so good. And, um, I just remember like, I think his partner was, like, a little bit, like, surprised in the way that she, like, saw me orgasm. Because, like, for me, like, it, like, rolled through my entire body. Like, when I have a clit orgasm or, like, a G-spot orgasm, it's very, like, um, like, it, it's it's more of, like, that peak, you know? And so it's, like, for me, like, it invokes more of, like, more, like, moans or, like, not screaming, but you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, something like that. Where I was, like, this one, like, instead of, like, making a lot of noises, it, like, literally just kind of, like, rolls through my entire body. And so it's, like, a whole body. Like, head-to-toe kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so, it lasts longer, too, yeah. I Oh, find. mine was, like, almost three yeah. minutes this time. I was, like, oh, my God, please stop. <laughs> so, Still going. It was so bad. <laughs> Anyways, um, that was my last sweet release on a Monday threesome at 7 p.m. And I was in bed. By 9? By 9.30. So, so close enough, close enough. But yeah, nice. That was, that was Thanks life. for sharing. Love it. I Absolutely. Actually, I haven't had sex in like five weeks, accidentally. Oh, because we were. Out well, of it can be a masturbation story. <gasps> but if you want to go back five weeks, you can, or whenever the last oh, yeah. partnered one was. Well, yeah, my last partnered one was actually with my play partner that I'm seeing tonight, and I that the last time I had sex with was with him. And then when we, whenever we were setting up our little date for tonight, it was funny because I was like, I haven't had sex in like five weeks. You may need to teach me <laughs> what it is. <laughs> I haven't seen a penis. <laughs> and he goes, we'll go through some rigorous training. I'm like, perfect. <laughs> nice. Um, man. But I want to say what I really liked about like my last partnered play, which was with him was I go in and I've been I had been kind of stressed and I was like, "Can you hold me?" <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, absolutely." So he just like held me. We usually like smoke a little weed. I like just hang out and talk for a little bit before sex. Um and then at one point, I'm like on his couch like bent over. <laughs> and he went to what he he went to like go get another condom or a toy or something like that anyways. And I'm just like you know, bent over the couch, like, playing with myself, and his cat walks up, and I was just like, oh, hey, and his cat just sits down, and then, like, he gets back, he's like, move, and then we continue on, and, um, did you orgasm? I did, I did orgasm very much, and I had a great time, but that's my five-week-old fuzzy memories, like, trying to remember little kitty, and I'm like, this is great. Do you often come more than once when you have pleasure sessions? Uh, usually I can come, like, if I get eaten out, I'll come pretty quick, and then, like, if they go in me, I can come again. So, like, within a session, I, like, two, three times max, and then you start back up, and then 
eat yeah. out a few more. So. What about you? Because, like, my max is, like, two to three, and after that, like, I'm done. And people are like, how are you not orgasming more if it's, like, three hours? And I'm like, I think three and three hours is fine, but, <laughs> or two and two hours, whatever. I am a multiple. I can do, like, eight, <gasps> ten, yeah. Congrats. I know, it's nice. I can't do that. The last time I did eight was with, um, oh, man, it was, like, this, like, 24-year-old little Aries guy. Oh, my God, he had a huge cock. <laughs> And he was like 24 years old, and I was, why was I was like 27 maybe. Um, and homie just wanted to fuck for hours, and so we did. Uh, we just like kept going, and he had like the stamina, and I was like, this is a lot. I feel old. <laughs> this is so much. Um, but I came like, yeah, eight, maybe 10 times. So, but That's usually my sweet spot's yeah. like three. That and is I'm a like, good yeah, sweet spot. Yeah. Love that. Well, thanks, ladies, for sharing. This was fun. I love normalizing pleasure, talking about kink and sex, so yes. I'm happy to have both of you here. We, yeah. I would love to have you back and talk about books because oh, I think that would be a really good episode. And Absolutely. Um, I've been trying to get into reading again. Um, my sister loves reading as well, and she's all about the smut, too, and the vampires and the fantasy. Perfect. So it'd be fun to, like, just chat books. Let's yeah. do it. I'm so. down, 100%. You, okay, you both are going to read the book that I'm reading right yeah. now, and then we'll do an episode on that. That sounds good. And talk about other smut books. But y'all are I y'all will love this one, I hope, as much <laughs> as I have loved it. I can't put it down. Well, yeah, thanks so. again for being here. Thanks, no, thank ladies. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we appreciate it. Enjoy. Yeah, I've, I've had a blast. We'll, we'll come back anytime. Good, good. Sure. Much love. Mm-hmm.